Howdy everybody, I'm Steve and I am a full-time RVer. And a while back, this is a 2007 model trailer, so around that vintage, 2007? Yeah, 2007. So around that vintage, they started doing this residential refrigerator thing. Literally, they went down to the big box store, got the cheapest refrigerator they could find that runs on 120 volts AC, and shoved it into a camper. It is... It used to be there. I took it out and there's a 12 volt fridge in its place and it ain't there no more, the 120 volt AC fridge. So why is it a bad idea? For a couple of reasons. Refrigerator compressors have oils inside of their refrigerants that keep their seals nice and fresh and stop all that refrigerant from leaking out. And what do most people do with campers? They put them in storage for weeks or months or even years at a time and don't use them. And those refrigerators, the seals in them, they dry out. When they dry out, all the refrigerant leaks past. That's got to be good for the environment, right? It's also not really good for your food. It's not good for your personal environment to have all that refrigerant leak out because now the refrigerator doesn't cool anything anymore. And really it's a bad idea to have a 120 volt AC fridge inside of something that's meant to go on the road. This is kind of a big trailer. Maybe people didn't think we were going to be taking it on the road as much as we do, but they were wrong. As you can imagine, the problem that we had with this thing is it stopped cooling. It turned on, the compressor ran, the compressor got warm, the interior light came on when you opened the door, but nothing ever got cold. And we let it go for a week or two while we were getting first set up to see what was going on and what our solution was and how do we solve this problem. And the solution was to get a 12 volt refrigerator. Makes perfect sense for a boondocking type setup where I can run it off of solar and batteries, right? So we had to get the old refrigerator out and that was a chore. They use really secure methods of securing this refrigerator to the RV. It was screwed to the floor and then it was taped and glued to the wall using these brackets on the back here. Unscrewing the screws on the floor was fine. I have no problem with that. The refrigerators have wheels in the front and make them easy to move. So you don't want the wheels to move, screw it to the floor. It ain't going anywhere, but you've got this big lever that's going to tip over. So that's where the glued and taped on angle brackets in the back hold it in place. I don't know. I guess it made it this far and we've moved it for a couple of hours on the road. So maybe a hundred miles or so. I personally would have done something a little bit better, like screwed the bracket to the refrigerator instead of just tape and glue. But I'm not a you know mechanical engineer working for one of the big RV manufacturers. What do I know, right? In order to get this thing out, I had to take the doors off to shrink it down. I had to take those brackets off the back in order to make it not as deep. And then I had to remove the little bit on the sliding glass door. I could not imagine trying to get one of these things out of a normal RV door. I probably would have had to cut it with a saw. That would have been fun. Even with that, it was still fun to get this big beast out of the door because you can't walk with it out of the door. So I just wound up tilting it over and it's outside and it's on its top. I did take this thing to my favorite metal recycling plant. The refrigerants already escaped a long time ago, so I'm not too worried about that. They didn't give me any money for it. They also didn't charge me any money for it. So I drove in, dropped it off, drove back out. Can't beat that. Until I could find a good friend to come by and help me with the install. This is one of those head scratcher things and you want somebody to bounce some ideas off of, especially when it pertains to your family's food and it pertains to electrical wiring and it pertains to explosive devices. And there's big warning labels all over this refrigerator that if you do it wrong, it's gonna explode. So in the short term, what I did was I hooked it up to a battery. I don't understand why this 12 volt refrigerator has a third connector on it for ground. Usually it is positive and negative for DC appliances and there's a ground on here. I checked the two connectors on the back. The ground does not connect to the negative terminal that connects to your battery. So I'm guessing it's a safety ground in case something shorts out in the chassis with the electrical, it shunts it right down to the negative ground and all is right with the world, but who knows? My battery doesn't have any way of connecting that ground and I wasn't gonna marry them up real quick. What I did do, however, was put a short little pigtail on here with some fuses in it to get this thing to Anderson power poles. So I've got a battery and a fused connection electrically and I've got the thing plugged in and it's running great. We ran this thing for about 24 hours straight before it needed a recharge on the battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery and refrigerators, if you think about it, work better when they're full of food. They're not designed to cool nothing inside. So they have to work a little harder because there's no cool mass inside to keep them cool. So I expect that I will get better performance out of this when it's full of food. And in my normal everyday running, it's not gonna be plugged into its own dedicated battery, but it is nice that you can do this. So if you have an off-grid cabin and you wanna run your refrigerator on a 12 volt battery and a solar panel, this is the way to do it. Figure out something about that safety ground. I'm not your electrician. I'm not even my own electrician. I'm just the guy that's hooking these wires up to each other. And it worked for me. We used it like this at a couple of different stops along the way to get to Huntsville, Alabama. 
where I met up with my friend to help me install it and I needed to recharge the battery. A couple of times I recharged it on solar and a couple of times I used this battery charger right here. This is a 40 amp hour charger and it was able to charge the battery in a little over two hours. 40 amps in, 40 times two is 80, got 20 left, so two and a half hours, I guess. Got the job done is really what was important. And the way I've got this wired in, the charger hooks to the battery, the battery hooks to the fridge. So I just woke up in the morning, turned it on and let it recharge while I was going about my business. Didn't have to worry about unplugging the battery or turning the fridge off or anything getting cool. Now we gotta get this 12 volt refrigerator installed. And for that, I enlisted the help of my buddy, Mike. Mike is a great person to have help you work on any type of big project. The longer the wire, the thicker the gauge. So I got some eight gauge wire to wire this thing in. And we put it into the panel and hooked it up to a empty fuse and got it all ready to roll. It's kind of interesting how these things are made. My travel trailer has insulation on the bottom, but it doesn't have tank heaters. So it's still a three seasons trailer, but it's a little bit more insulated than most. And I'm not 100% sure what's above any of this insulation. So I did a test cut and fished my fingers up in there to figure it out. One of the times I did that, I fished my fingers up in there and I found some water pipes and I was a little concerned. And then I realized those water pipes are moving a little too much. They're not very uh, secure. They're not full of water. They're not very heavy. They moved left and right a little bit. They moved front and back. They moved front and back a whole lot. It turns out somehow, I don't know how they did this, but somehow they left me three feet of red and blue pecs taped together. Thank you, I think. RV construction is really, really bad really bad. But I've got some spare pecs out of the deal and I found a good place to drill a hole in the floor. With Mike upstairs in the main floor of the building, I took my drill and I drilled up through the bottom and he saw where the drill started to push the sheet goods on the floor up out of the way. Nope, not good enough. Got to get farther out towards the wall. So we are outbound of the frame rail in order to get that hole through. We finally got the hole through, ran the cables up and then ran them back down to the fuse panel in the back and got them all connected. The red wire goes to the fuse panel for positive electricity. The black wire goes straight to the nearest frame rail to give you the quickest path to ground as possible. And then that safety ground that I told you about before, the green wire, I ran a short green jumper and put it on the exact same screw. Because if I took that black wire and ran it all the way back to the fuse panel, number one, there's no place to land it. And number two, that fuse panel is just gonna go right to the chassis anyway. And what the instructions say for the refrigerator is to take the green wire and run that straight to the chassis. So why drill two holes in my chassis? One is good enough. Self-tapping screw, star washer to give it a little bit of bite, and then the two wires landed on it for your negative connection and your ground connection. And I've been doing this now for over a month and haven't had any problems. I can highly recommend this refrigerator. Keeps your cold stuff cold and that's the important part. One of the other cool things about this versus an absorption type refrigerator is that your absorption type refrigerators need a way to defrost. And sometimes they sweat on the inside and sometimes that water runs down in the back like it's supposed to. And sometimes that drain hose is routed appropriately out of the trailer and sometimes it's routed right onto wooden construction members that rot. Sometimes it runs out the front of the refrigerator and it runs down the front of your cabinets which are cheap particle board covered with paper covering to make them look pretty and then that swells up and that's pretty ugly too. Overall, this is a big win. As we are plugged into shore power, the converter box in the back will charge the battery, which is fantastic for when we're driving. And it will also run all of the 12 volt DC appliances from the converter itself. So I don't have to worry about my battery going dead. And my favorite thing is that when I'm going down the road, I don't need my propane turned on to keep my refrigerator running. That was always a concern. I never did it, but I didn't really think it would be prudent I don't know, pick a word. I didn't think it would be prudent to use the propane going down the highway, running the propane burner to keep the refrigerator cold. So now I've got two holes drilled in the bottom of my trailer. And in order to make sure those holes were not necessarily watertight because it's a wooden floorboard, but make sure that they were insulation tight, I used that spray foam insulation and put it all up in there and got it all sealed up so that none of my cold air falls out and none of the hot air comes in or however insulation works. I think this is gonna be the most epic peel of all time. Almost makes it worth paying $1,000 for a new refrigerator.
One more to go. There are links in the description down below for the refrigerator, the wiring, the crimping tools, all the stuff that I needed to get this job done. And it was a fun adventure getting this whole thing done and sorted out, and I like the mental exercise of it all. One of the cool things about being a full-time RVer is that you get to have all of these little mental challenges that come up and make you think. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel to see more crazy thinking things that this guy does. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. I'll see you over there.